Hi folks, I recently made this little button controller with a ESP32 and I've got it working with my Hubitat Hub to control these uh, Zigbee bulbs. And they come on gradually, but when they turn off, you can see the response time is pretty good. So um, I'm happy with this. It's working over Wi-Fi. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to make some other things with this, like a scene controller and other things. But I wasn't sure what I was getting into when I made this. And I thought I'd make a little video just explaining uh, the overall process and what I ran into. So the basic process, uh, as far as I understand it, is you need to get Arduino installed on your computer. Uh, the Arduino like support information is really good. And there's lots of like general purpose guides out there on how to do that on your machine. And then uh, you need to download all the uh, stuff, the like ST anything Hubduino files off of GitHub. And you need to copy over all the sketches and add the appropriate libraries to Arduino. And the uh, Hubduino like guide, the README is really good. It's, it covers like pretty much pretty much everything there. And then the, the point where I ran into trouble was getting Arduino to talk to my board. Um, and what I did uh, that I think could be helpful is I actually dusted off an old Arduino board that I had. And I first got that working with my board, just with their like built-in demos and like example sketches. Because that's a lot easier because there's a ton of like documentation on like how to get an Arduino board working with Arduino on whatever computer you're using. And then from there, once I was like talking to this Arduino board, I knew that like my cord was good and like everything was fine. And that whatever troubles I ran into after that were like specific to the ESP32 and like kind of the more sp the stuff I was trying to do. So yeah, I definitely suggest that. I don't know how much Arduino boards are, but if you have one laying around, I definitely recommend trying with that because I had a bad, just like a bad USB cord that was like causing me trouble at first. And I didn't figure that out until I tried the Arduino. Um, so yeah, and I did uh, install a UART to USB driver on my computer. I don't even know if that's that was necessary, but that might be something you run into depending on what ESP... 32 board you get. I I used the uh, ESP32 Rover E. Um, I don't really know the differences between them, but I just got a simple like breakout board that gives me access to the pins. But I specifically wanted to avoid the more like uh, complex boards. You can get them with like, you know, they'll accept different voltages and stuff. And I just didn't want any extra variables when I was just doing my first attempt at this. So this is a very simple uh, breakout board for it. And then after that, um, you need to verify the ST Anything's multiple sketch. That's kind of the demo sketch in the Hubduino files that they tell you to run. And I ran into trouble with that. Um, it was the uh, temperature humidity sensor. I was getting an error on it. And I'm pretty sure I'm just missing a very specific library that I couldn't track down. I, I thought I I thought I figured out which one it was several times and it it just wasn't any of those. So uh, in the end, what I did is I just commented out the lines that were giving me errors. If you put in two backslashes, it'll just uh, turn that line of code into a comment that won't get loaded onto your board. Um, so I just commented out the, uh, the temperature sensor and then tried to verify it again and got another error and then just commented out that line and then did that a couple times. And then eventually it, uh, it verified fine. Um, and at that point, I was able to load it onto my board. And from the serial output, I could see that um, that it, the board was like responding. Like I, if I took pin number four to ground, I could see, you know, I think that the button number one was pressed. Or sorry, that's button number two. Um, so yeah, I could see it was working at that point. And then from there, um, I had to go into my router and I needed to assign a static IP address to Hubitat, uh, the hub, and also the ESP32. Um, and I needed the MAC address of the ESP32, and I think I got that from one of the like example sketches that got loaded in when I added all the Hubduino stuff. Um, but sorry, I just 
<laughs> I, I don't I don't really know what all I did. Um, but it's, it's somehow I got the MAC address for the SP32. And then uh, I don't really show, want to show you all my network information, but you have to load your network information into the ST anything multiple sketch. And then you also have to manually copy over all of the code for each individual driver um, and add it into Hubitat, which it looks like a lot, but honestly, once I got cruising with it, it didn't take that long. And then finally, um, when you add the code, you'll be making a lot of child devices. You know, there'll be like carbon monoxide detector. And when I, at that point, once I got it, you know, the, the code loaded and running on the SP32 and all this information like synced up between the hub and the SP32, I could go to the child device, like the carbon monoxide detector, and I could like connect that, the associated pin to ground and, um, and I could see it react. But the thing is there aren't child devices for the buttons. The, um, the ESP32 itself, like the parent device acts as like a button manager. So what you have to do is you have to make an app that says, you know, when the button's pressed on the ESP32 parent device, and it, it'll have like a button number, um, you know, when that happens, do this. So th the, there's no child device. You just um, refer to it as the button number on the, uh, the parent device, the ESP32. And then uh, I got the button number two working on pin number four right away with that. But uh, button one on pin 16 wasn't working. And I noticed there was some overlap where it seemed like that was used for something else as well. I could be wrong about that. Uh, but also the response time was like pretty poor. So what I did is I went through the whole code and I just commented out everything that didn't seem to be either like essential general purpose code or directly related to the buttons. So, you know, the water sensor, the voltage sensor, carbon monoxide sensor, like all of that stuff um, and all of the, like the definitions of the different pins. And I just stripped out everything I could just to make like, to see what my best possible response time was with this code on this device and, and whatnot. Um, and I also switched uh, button number one over to pin 12 instead of 16. And that, that was working for me. Um, and once I did all that, then my response time was really good. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the whole process. I don't know if this is helpful. Um, I'm definitely not qualified to like make a guide about this, but there wasn't one out there. And I was kind of confused and I wanted just an overall explanation of like the process and like what like you know so anyways I don't know if it's helpful but uh so I got for you best of luck bye